Centers in sixth grade? Are you crazy? Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary Ellen and I work in the field of education in the state of Illinois. Today I want to talk a little bit about centers in middle school. Are they needed? Are they not needed? The opinion that I'm going to give you in this video is just that, my opinion. It's not the opinion of the district I work in right now. It's not the opinion of a district I've worked in previously. It's the opinion of myself, of what I've seen in students, of the growth that I have noticed by utilizing centers throughout my classroom in the upper grade levels. So when do I find it appropriate to use centers? I always have something planned for early finishers. What do I have planned for early finishers? I have continued RTI planned for early finishers or my centers. The first thing that I have planned is something that I've already talked to you about and that is my Google Classroom called Early Finishers. I also showed you a couple of the things that I have listed on there. I have the Scholastic Study Jams, I have the Into the Book Reading, I have the Number Rock for some music that the students can listen to and once they go on there they are excited and love those songs. I also had lyrics to learn, which is a great side to work on comprehension. Now, although I do have the Early Finishers website, I also think it is a great thing to have some physical centers. So I wanna talk about some physical centers that I utilize within my classroom. So let me show you those now. Just one additional side note, the centers that I'm going to go over right now show you what I start with at the beginning of the year. As we continue to advance throughout the school year, I do add more. And that just kind of revolves around the concepts that I start adding throughout the year that the other teachers throughout the school continue to add throughout the year. I want to make sure that it grows with them. That way, as I RTI in small groups, the students can RTI themselves in the center areas because it is free choice on what they choose during that time, which I think is wonderful. I place my centers in an easy to locate area of the room. This year, it is adjacent to my small group table. In my centers, I have several reading activities that I purchased from Lakeshore Learning. Grammar, writing, literature, informational text, and vocabulary. I also have two bingos that relate to our reading curriculum. One is connected to parts of speech, and the other is punctuation. There are several bingo chips on the shelves. Currently, students utilize some of these for the bingos. However, as the year moves forward, they will need these for additional games as well. Towards the end of the shelf, I have a Snap It Up game, which is a fast-paced math facts game, as well as a board game which focuses on math concepts. There are some brain quests for students to read and a puzzle. My students always love the puzzle. Several state that they have never put one together before. This provides them not only with a calming activity, but also strengthens their problem-solving skills. On the bottom of the shelf, I have placed two electronic games that tell interesting facts about dinosaurs. I also have two clipboards out. These can be utilized during center time. If I have something like a crossword out, or if the students are utilizing flexible seating and need something to write on, I also have science hot dots in order to support scientific knowledge. The rolled up games came out of a mailbox book. These are wonderful, interactive, and challenging games for the students. I have a bag full of dice. These will be utilized as I continue to add centers. The games from Lakeshore Learning are placed on my center shelf. However, they are also great to pull into my RTI if they relate to my small group needs. I really like that each box contains several different options. Therefore, multiple students can work in the box at a time. The instructions are on each and every box. The cards come in separate baggies for great organization. Here is an example of one of the mailbox games. Again, this came in one of the mailbox books. I have both math and ELA themed games. I simply removed them from the books and laminated them. The instructions are on the game board, so it is very simple for the students to play in a center. I also laminated the game pieces and placed a picture and title of what the game pieces went with. Anything that the game requires is placed in a baggie and they are all stored together. So what am I doing Why these students are busy working on these centers? Well, I'm definitely not sitting around taking a little nap over there by my desk. 
No, I am very busy. I am pulling students back to my small group table and just working with small groups. Now, if they are to reading uh, different pieces of literature, we are doing that and we are having some good group collaborations, some talking about the literature itself. So whatever areas they need to focus on, that's what we are doing. If I need to pull in games focused on anything that maybe they are struggling with and need to improve on, we do that as well. So when do I incorporate centers into my day? Well, there's a little something called study hall. And the first thing they need to do in study hall is any homework that they have in other classes. But a lot of time, those students will be able to zoom through that pretty quickly. After that's done, that's when our centers start coming into play. And I do kind of have a list of things they need to go through. First is that L2L, then that Spelling City, then it's their choice, their free choice of what they get to do. They get to RTI themselves. What is their correct level? What maintains their interest? What is building their learning? And of course, I am pulling back those small groups during this time. I do continue this on just a little bit after study hall because I want to meet with those small groups that I might have missed during the study hall while they were out at band or course. A different type of center than the one that I'm actually focusing on in this video would be where after you teach a lesson, you give the students something to do individually or in small groups where you can pull students back to work with them in reading groups. And this is something important to do if you do teach rotations of ELA. It just depends on your group of students, how much teacher support they need in place before you're able to do that. But I personally believe that that type of center is also needed in middle school. Thank you so much for watching and remember to be proud of your work, productive in your day, and positively joyful.